The bark of the Daphne shrub, also known as lokta, has to be washed and then boiled in order to make paper from it. When electricity came to this area, Porna Gurung was finally able to purchase a boiler and shredder. Today, he has 10 employees that collect and wash the lokta bark. The heavy work is done by machines. We used to have to boil the lokta bark using firewood and stamp on it with our feet to soften it. The electricity comes from a small hydroelectric power plant. The government has been promoting them in this mountain region for years and giving loans to entrepreneurs and farmers so they can buy machines. After the power plant was installed and we got electricity, I was in a better position economically. I had lower labor costs, so I was able to make a profit, and I could even save some money. The Annapurna mountain range in the Himalayas overlooks the village of Gandruk, which lies at an elevation of 2,000 meters. This is where Porna Gurung lives. The area has a lot of water, so it makes sense to install hydroelectric power plants, which are relatively easy to build and are environmentally friendly. Government support for the hydropower projects is granted only to villages that agree to pitch in. Ten years ago, Bidya Bishwakarma helped to build this power plant. Today, she's the deputy manager. The village, meanwhile, has nine of these power plants, each with a management board and a manager. They handle the finances themselves. At the moment, the plant is self-sustaining. The fee we get from our customers helps us pay our staff. And it's enough to maintain the plant as well. The electricity from the hydropower plant was also a blessing for Shantamaya Gurum, who runs a bakery. The mother of two can now provide the entire village with bread. I was the first person to open a bakery here. For the past five years, she's been baking bread here. Her brother works by her side. She's already managed to pay off the mixer in the oven. But if something breaks, it can get expensive. It can be difficult if one of the machines stops working. Then we have to go all the way to Pokhara to have it fixed. Fortunately, she also earns money from her small kiosk, which is right next to the bakery. Local people are her main customers. But tourists who come here to go climbing in the Annapurna Mountains sometimes shop here too. The village of Gandruk is home to about 5,200 people. The power plants have changed their lives. They now cook with electricity. And there are two telecommunications masts in the village. Healthcare has also improved. Recently, I had dental treatment, which was only possible because the medical station has electricity now. Without electricity, none of this would exist. Everyone is making the most of it. Nonetheless, about 40% of the people in the villages here still don't have electricity. Nepal has been working to renew and expand the electricity grid after a devastating earthquake destroyed much of it four years ago. Hydroelectric power is the linchpin of the government's plan. A lot has changed for papermaker Porna Gurung. He's even been able to open a shop in Pokhara, the second largest city in Nepal. This is where he sells his untreated paper, as well as products such as diaries and notebooks cards and lampshades. This income made it possible for the widower to raise his two children and send them to school. His daughter now lives in Pokhara and also works in the shop. Porna Gurung stops by at least once a week. He's planning to expand his business. 
Lokta and Himalayan nettle could be processed in the same facility. So I'm thinking of expanding and processing nettles to make fabric. Pornagurung has big plans for the future, but he doesn't want to move to the city full time. The mountains are his home. <laughs>